How many of you are ready for the message this morning? Awesome, awesome. Well, we've been on this family month, and uh, I love this time of the year where we choose this series because I love that we uh, honor each other, you know, honor a member of a family each week. We have done that um, in the last several weeks, but it's my honor this morning uh, and my pleasure today to honor the singles of the church this morning. Come on, yeah. There's more singles in this service than the next, so I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to get a lot of feedbacks and amens, you know, so in this service, so awesome. Well, let's jump in uh, to the scripture for, found in book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, and, then, and it says, Then the Lord said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will help, I will make a helper who is just right for him. Genesis 2.18. Now, you must be wondering, Pastor, and I thought you're talking to singles today. This particular scripture is typically spoken at marriages or towards marriages. But I want to let you know that this verse, although God referenced this to Eve, um, this has eternal principle. That it isn't limited to marriage only. How many of you know that God has designed us not to do life alone? Right? It's none of our, uh, us are better when we are alone. God de designed us for family, for church family. Relationships uh, in marriage will, will be temporary or are temporary. Right? They only last here on earth. But relationships with church family are eternal. Amen? Look to your neighbor and just say, man, you're stuck with me for a long time. <laughs> this will be fun. Although God honors marriage, he also made it very clear um, that we will not be married in heaven. But we will be brothers and sisters in heaven. Now let that sink in. I know that when... When I shared this uh, verse or when Sonia came to know about this verse, she was really troubled. She's like, oh, I don't like that. I want to be with you forever. So um, uh, how many of you know that uh, uh, husband and wives, they're like, why this is the case? Because they can get some rest in heaven <laughs> right, from each other. <laughs> Come on. Hey, it was a singles message today. So, this joke was told to me by Hector Senior and Vivian right after first service. I was like, hey, do you mind if I use that? He, there, I'll go for it. <laughs> well, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 7, uh, verse 7, he says, but I, this is Paul writing to the church in Corinth, and he says, but I wish everyone were single just as I am, yet each person has a special gift from God, one kind or another. So what, what he's saying here, Paul is saying is marriage is a gift, but so is singleness. So singleness is a gift from God. Whether you are married or single, our job is the same. Our job is to bring honor. It's our, our job is to bring God the greatest glory in our lives. We can equally bring God whatever state we're, we are in, whether married or single. Why I say this is because oftentimes we see that the, in, in our church culture has made singles to feel like a second class citizen. But this is not how God sees us. He got, uh, God sees us as his own precious son or daughter, right? He, and and th that's how he sees us. And I wanted to kind of speak on like three expressions uh, of, of singleness. So the first one I want to talk about is singleness is a calling. Now, Paul was a single man who used this special gift of being single to devote his entire life, his entire self to the Lord and the Lord's call on his life. He, he was a, um, an amazing man of God. And he made such a drastic difference, a big difference in, in the church today. Most of the letters that we read or in, the, in the New Testament were itself written by Apostle Paul. And further, 
Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20, uh, 32 through 35. It's on your screen. Verse 32 says, I want you to be free from all the concerns of this life. An unmarried man can spend his uh, time doing Lord's work and thinking how to please him. Now, we see that we need men and women like you who has no one else to please but the Lord. Amen. In fact, the greatest man, as we know, who walked on the face of this earth was Jesus himself. He served the will of his father on earth while he was a single man here on earth. Verse 33, it says, But a married man has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. Speaking of honeydew lists, right? But, um, uh, where am I? Okay, in the same way, a woman who is no longer married or has never been married, um, married uh, can be devoted to the Lord and holy in body and in spirit. But a married woman has to think about her earthly responsibilities and, and how to please her husband. I am saying this for your benefit. Paul is telling the, the church. I'm saying this for your benefit. Not to place restrictions on you. He's not trying to restrict us. I want you to do whatever will help you serve the Lord best. Amen. Without any restrictions. Without any distractions. With as few distractions as possible. Now, I know that this concept is pretty foreign in our culture. Uh, because it's not understood or honored by the Lord. A life dedicated to God. You know, uh, we see many uh, in, in recent histories or in the, in the past histories where there were individual saints that de devoted their entire life, their self, to honor the Lord. And it, it is a calling from the Lord. So that is the first expression of singleness. The second one I want to talk about is single for a season. Practically speaking, how many of you know that everyone will be single for at least one season of your life, simply because of our age? No one is mar uh, born married. Right? That's true, right? Well, no one popped out with a ring on their finger, right? <laughs> so we know that there is a season of our lives that all of us will be married for whatever reason. You know, whether, you know, th there was a, um, a, a divorce or a separation um, or you lost uh, your spouse in that process. So you're, uh, that you are single for that season. I wanted to share um, uh, uh, my own story from our family and uh, many of you know uh, my, uh, my testimony or my, uh, our uh, family story is when uh, we came uh, from Fiji Islands to United States. We migrated about uh, 26 years, I think, ago. 97 is when we came. And we couldn't um, uh, come as a whole family together. Uh, first, we came, myself, my brother, and my mom, we came here first. And uh, because of some paperwork migration issue, um, that six, uh, it was supposed to take about six months to correct those situation and have him join us uh, within six to uh, uh, one year. But that six uh, months ended up being eight years. It was a long uh, season of separation uh, for my mom from, uh, from my dad. Now, this wasn't by choice. This was uh, definitely uh, 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 because of migration issues. So it wasn't their choice to be separated. But why I share this is because I had a prime uh, a seat, a front row seat, just to see in that season how my parents, uh, especially my mom, because I was with her here, that how she chose to honor God, God during that eight years of separation from my dad. That was probably the most difficult season that she probably went through. It wasn't easy. We were, uh, we were teenagers when she brought us here. And um, it wasn't easy for, for, us from, uh, for us to come from a very small nation, which was a, a, a less than one million population, 
to be dropped in the middle of L.A. That was, uh, and we came and we saw, uh, that was the first time I saw that many cars in my life. And I was like, why, why do they do this? Why do they drop us in the middle of L.A.? LAX, you know, why can't they start with Nebraska or something, you know, like, <laughs> so that was difficult, but, well, why I share this is that um, single for a season, wherever you are, if you are in that season of being single, um, I loved and I honor my mom and my parents, um, especially to, they chose to honor God and keep their marriage holy. Um, you know, after a few years, they could have thrown in the towel or they could have given up on each other. But what they did was they chose to honor God. They chose to honor their marriage and put God first during that season. So thank you, Mom, for, for your faithfulness. My dad, thank you. They're happily married. Amen. The third expression that I wanted to share was, uh, is that uh, single uh, for a reason. Now, this is uh, for someone that perhaps desires uh, to be married, but there is something hindering them. There is something that is preventing them uh, from experiencing uh, a married life. And it could be a timing issue, you know, whether it's you're in the season of um, really developing a financial security a career, you're pursuing um, education, a higher education for this season. Uh, it could be um, either unhealthy traits that, that for a reason, uh, though, though that might be a hurdle for you to jump over to overcome this, whether it's immaturity during the season, um, you know, whether it's a fear of faith, maybe it's uh, something that you have encountered before in the past relationships that is preventing you from moving forward. And that, that is um, a, a reason I'm going to talk more about the how to overcome that here in a bit. But that is another expression that I wanted to talk about, that you are single for a, a reason because of there's the hindrances that is preventing you from uh, getting married. Now, switching gears, I wanted to share um, five words of wisdom uh, for singles. The first one uh, is uh, number one is if you want to be married, become that person that you are looking for. That would be the wisdom or nugget number one. And uh, and for to uh, illustrate this, I wanted to share a, a small story from uh, from a book that um, uh, we went through as a, a small group in our marriage class uh, in the past season. And I wanted to share this story because it just basically tells and helps with this point. So there was this young girl, a very committed Christian. Uh, she, uh, when she went away to college, uh, she did what a lot of colleges, college students do. First, she gave in uh, to a little peer pressures. She started going to parties and you know mingling with wrong people. Uh, what started uh, as having a drink every now and then gradually melted into more and more. After a while, uh, she tried even few drugs here and there too. Of course, she met a lot of guys and uh, she made some wrong choices there, which evolved into guy after guy after guy. Then without even realizing what was happening to her, she gradually slid into a lifestyle of very destructive sin. Even as all this was going on in her life, somewhere in the back of her mind, she kept thinking, I still believe in God. I'd like to have a godly marriage one day. Sometime I'll go back and do what, um, to do what I know is right before the Lord. But in the meantime, she continued to uh, live this destructive lifestyle. As fate would have it, one day a friend of hers introduced her to a, a guy in front of a student uh, union. He was everything she was, um, she was hoping for, for in a potential uh, husband. He was a godly, uh, terrific leader. Uh, he disciplined other men. He was uh, uh, already using his gifts to try to make a difference in the world. And he was just beginning uh, what looked like uh, was going to be a very promising career. So really, this girl 
was looking for this type of uh, uh, guy and she was like, it, he was right in front of her. She felt like that they really hit it off and she talked to him every chance she got. So after a few weeks, uh, she came home for the weekend and she told her mom, I'm pretty excited, mom. I've met this guy at school. He's everything I've ever wanted. He's godly and he's kind and he's wise. He's just perfect, mom. He exact, uh, he's exactly the kind of guy I've always wanted to marry. Um, I think he, he might be the one for me. How many of you heard, have heard that? I, I think he might be the one for me. I'm thinking about letting him know how I feel. Now, the girl's mom uh, frowned a little. Uh, as loving, uh, lov uh, lovingly as she could, she said, Oh, sweetheart, if this boy is everything you say he is, I think you really need to be honest with yourself. A young man like this or like that probably isn't looking for a girl like you. Ouch. Truth.com. Moms, they don't hold back. They say it how it is. And it is true. She spoke that into her daughter's life. If you want that type of guy in your life to, to marry, you need to become that person. You need to live a godly life too. So she spoke that into her life. The second wisdom I wanted to talk about is finding or find a healthy community. Like I stated earlier, God has not designed us to do life alone. Singleness doesn't have to mean loneliness, right? Uh, it means that you, can, uh, you have more time to hang out with good friends. You don't have to run errands and pick up your kids from soccer practice, right? It means that you have more time that you can have godly friends around. Join a small group, right? We have small group tents out there today that you can sign up. Don't do life alone, you know. Serve, uh, uh, whether here in church or in your community. Uh, make a difference in, in, in lives of others, you know. So don't do life alone, right? Find a healthy community. If you are alone in this season, whether single or, or anything, I would say that would be, uh, be my encouragement to find a healthy community, right? Don't find unhealthy community. I need to clarify that as well. Oftentimes that happens as well. We need to find healthy community. And you know what? A good source for that is church here at Thrive. Amen? Come on. Build a uh, third word of wisdom is build your career and health. Commit uh, to building a solid financial foundation. Don't incur large debt that will be a burden to you and your spouse later on. Okay. Um, also, look presentable. All right. Guys, take showers more often. All right. More. If you're in the market, make sure. Get a haircut here and there. Do a clean shave. Put some deodorant on, guys. Come on. All right. Man, young adults are fired up. Come on. I love that. I love that. So that's true. Work on your career. Have good financial uh, foundation. Work on your health. Make sure you look presentable. Amen. So, all right. That's a word of encouragement right there. Awesome. Now, next word, uh, word of wisdom that I wanted to share is commit to sexual purity. G this is a very important um, word of wisdom. Jesus was fully human and tempted in all the ways we are as human beings, including sex sexual temptations. Yet, he never engaged in a single sexual act, physically or mentally. He found contentment in obedience to God and in healthy relationships with the church, with his disciples. That what he, his goal was, to f find contentment in that. He did his father's will in life. God is holy, right? And he wants us to live a holy life. What does holy mean? To be, to be set apart, right? So that's what God really wants us from us. 
I was thinking of like, what, how can I illustrate this um, point a little bit more? And I couldn't think of anything, but one thing I uh, came across like just first service was like uh, an example of, I grew up, uh, grew up in the island. So we were surrounded always with fruit trees. You know, there's abundance of fruit trees, guava, papayas, um, you name it, bananas. We were always surrounded by it. But we were always told, don't pick the, the fruit while they are unripe, while they are green. Wait, wait until it gets fully ripened. Because once you wait for a long time before it gets ripened, and, and when you pick that, that's when you'll get the sweetest fruit. And when you cut it open, it will be the sweetest fruit. So wait until it gets ripe, guys. Wait, all right? Um, also, I was thinking of this, that you know, God designed us to long for someone, right? He, he designed us at that, that way, whether it's in marriage or with the Lord or finding a community. That's what, how God designed us. Uh, I can think of, um, well, we, we shared earlier about uh, Adam and Eve, right? When he created Adam, right, um, everything was good. He created um, light, the beast, the air. And when he created, finished creating it, he said, it is good, right? And he, even when he created men, he was, it is good. But uh, he noticed that Adam was longing for something. He didn't look right, right? Uh, well, God, you designed him. He, didn't, he wasn't looking good because he didn't have someone to share life with. Well, what did God do? He kept him busy. He said, name all the animals, right? So Adam, that's your tour, man. Like, you have to wait for the optimum time. So name all the animals you can. So his duty for I don't know how long was to name all the animals, right? So after he was done with that, then he provided him with Eve. And as soon as he saw her, he goes, whoa, man. So that's where the word woman comes from, right? So guys... And girls, name the animals, right, before. <laughs> awesome. Man, amen. Well, I'm flying like a, a breeze right here, so I'm going to ask worship team to join me here. I have one more last point to uh, share. Last word of wisdom for, for us here is, the fifth is that become one with God. That God is your one. And how many of you know that when we find that, that person that we really desire, like the girl story I um, read earlier, you know, the, especially girls, man, they go and share with their uh, friends. Guess what? I found the one. I'm so excited. You know, and uh, but how many of you know who, uh, the question is, who is really your number one today? You know, if you can get this, this pro, uh, out of every um, every step that I've told every, uh, everything that I've said today get this that I honestly believe it's one of the most important foundational principles that you and I need to maintain a meaningful relationship with anyone lasting relationships with anyone is to make God your number one if we make God the number one everything else comes in its right place if you put uh, I think Pastor Hector shared this so nicely if we put our spouse before God you are doomed for future I mean it will you're positioning yourself not to succeed if you put your kids your career in front of the Lord you know we're not following the God's uh, uh, the, the protocol there how God has designed us to be is to be one with him amen what Jesus uh, is essentially saying here in Matthew 22 37 uh, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus that Jesus what, what is the greatest commandment of all all the commandments that we have and what we live by what is the greatest one and Jesus simply replied you must you must love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. 
Jesus was essentially saying, God is your one. Become one with God.